Welcome to this presentation of Morley's Theorem, or otherwise known as Morley's Miracle. It is presented by Rachel Perry and Anjani Mula for Math 3321, Section 501 at the University of Texas at Dallas. We hope you enjoy it. Let us first state what Morley's Theorem is. Morley's Theorem states that when a triangle's angles are trisected, there are three points of intersection with the adjacent trisectors form an equilateral triangle. This theorem is relevant for any triangle. Let me show you exactly what this theorem means. Let there be a triangle ABC. Draw the two trisectors from angle A. Now draw the closest trisectors on both angle B and C to intersect with angle A's trisectors. Draw the final two trisectors until they intersect. There should be three points. Draw lines between the three points to create a triangle. Morley's theorem states that this triangle that we created is always equilateral, no matter what triangle ABC looks like. We're going to talk about the man who discovered the theorem, Frank Morley. Frank Morley was a well-known mathematician. He is known for his research in the field of geometry and algebra. In 1879, he attended King's College, Cambridge, and graduated the BA in mathematics. One day, as he was researching, he happened upon Morley's theorem. In fact, the discovery of the theorem was a complete accident, and hence it is known as Morley's Miracle. The theorem is very recent, as it was discovered in 1899. After its discovery, he became the chairman of the mathematics department at John Hopkins University. There have been many proofs that have been developed since its discovery. For the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the proof provided by Brian Stonebridge. Brian Stonebridge is a retired lecturer that spent 30 years at the University of Bristol. His proof was developed in 2009, which is pretty recent. His proof relies on several different factors that we will need to show before we go into Morley's theorem proof. These include the sum of the angles in a triangle and the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral, Pons S norm, several properties of tangent lines to a circle, and certain properties of similar triangles. First, we will prove what is the sum of all angles in a triangle. I am sure that you all know this already, but we will go over it just in case. We all know that a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. If we have triangle ABC, we can draw a parallel line to BC that goes through the vertex A and has a point X and Y. Since these lines are parallel, we know that angle XAB is equal to angle ABC since they are alternate interior angles. Similarly, angle YAC is equal to angle ACB. A line is 180 degrees, so since angle XAB plus angle BAC plus angle YAC equals 180 degrees, then we note through substitution that angle ABC plus angle BAC plus angle ACB equals 180 degrees. We can apply this proof to show that the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. This is shown by demonstrating that a quadrilateral can be split into two triangles, and by adding the angles of these two triangles, they add up to 360 degrees. Next, we need to prove Pons Asinorum. Pons Asinorum is a theorem that states that on an isosceles triangle, which is a triangle with two equal sides and a base, has base angles that are equal. An interesting fact about Pons Asinorum is the meaning of the name. The name is Latin for bridge of asses. It's uncertain why it is called this, but it is kind of interesting. Before we get into that proof, we need to talk about some cri congruence criterion. When two shapes are congruent, it means that they have the same sh shape and the same size. This means that all of the sides and angles on one shape are equal with the corresponding sides and angles of another shape. With triangles, there are multiple ways to prove this. Side 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 or SSS states that two triangles are congruent when all of the corresponding sides between the triangles are equal. Side angle side or SAS states that two triangles are congruent when two corresponding sides and the corresponding angle between them are equal. For later, we need to state that the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem states that two right triangles are equal if their two hypotenuses and one of their corresponding legs are equal. We won't need this right now, but we will need it in a few minutes. Now we can move on to proving Pons Asinorum. Let there be an isosceles triangle ABC where AB equals AC. We are going to prove that angle ABC equals angle ACB. First, extend lines AB and AC such that BX equals CY. Now draw lines BY and CX. Since we know that angle A equals angle A, AX equals AY, and AB equals AC, 
triangle ABY is congruent to triangle ACX by side angle side or SAS. BY and CX are equal since they are corresponding sides of those two triangles. Since BC equals BC and BX equals CY, triangle BCX is congruent to triangle CBY by side 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 or SSS. Since the angle of a straight line is 180 degrees, angle ABC and angle ACB are supplementary with angle XBC and angle BCY respectively. Since angle XBC equals angle BCY because they are corresponding angles, angle ABC must equal angle ACB. This concludes our proof for Pons Asinorum. Next, we are going to prove that if there are two tangents to a circle starting at the same point, then these two tangents will be equal and the line from the center of the circle will bisect them. First, we will show that two tangents of a circle are equal if they start at the same point. Draw an arbitrary circle with the center O. Label a point P outside of the circle and draw two tangents to points Q and R on the sides of the circle. We are going to show that PQ equals PR. Draw OP, OQ, and OR. OQ and OR are the radiuses, and since they intersect with the tangents, angle OQP equals 90 degrees, which also equals angle ORP. We also know that OQ equals OR since they are the radiuses, and OP equals OP. Since triangles OPQ and OPR are right triangles, we can prove that they are congruent by hypotenuse leg theorem or HL. This shows that PQ equals PR since they are corresponding sides. Similarly, we can also show that angle OPQ equals angle OPR since they are corresponding angles. This shows that the line OP bisects angle QPR. This will be needed towards the end of Morley's theorem proof, so keep an eye out for it. We also need to talk about similarity. Two triangles are similar when they have the same shape but not the same size. This means that all the sides on one triangle are proportional to the sides of another triangle. Although two shapes may not have the same size, the same shape results in equal angles. As a result, to prove that two triangles are similar, you just need to show all the angles are the same. This means that the property angle-angle or AA comes into play. You really only need two angles in a triangle to prove that they are similar because all of the angles add up to 180 degrees. This will be used towards the end of the proof very briefly. I know y'all are eager to get into the proof, but we just want to state one last thing. We wanted to remind you that equilateral triangles are triangles in which all the sides are equal and as a result all of the angles equal 60 degrees. Finally, we may go into Morley's theorem proof. Before we begin, I encourage you to take out a piece of paper and follow along with us. First, let us state that there is a triangle DEF with angle 3 alpha, 3 beta, and 3 gamma. When these angles are added together, they are 180 degrees. Through doing some simple algebra, we get that when these angles are trisected, alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 60 degrees. Since Brian Stonebridge's proof works backwards, let us begin there. Let there be an equilateral triangle, x, y, z. P, Q, and R are the points on the altitudes of triangle x, y, z. These points can be anywhere on the altitudes since Morley's theorem applies to all triangles. Let us focus on x, p. Draw p, z, and p, y, creating isosceles triangle y, p, z. Now, let angle XPY equal angle XPZ equal alpha plus 30 degrees. This value is just stated, but it is necessary for the proof. Now, let us do the same with R and Q. Draw QX and QZ along with RX and RY. Similar to what we just previously mentioned, we now can assume that angle YQZ equals angle YQX equals beta plus 30 degrees and angle ZRX equals angle ZRY equals gamma plus 30 degrees. Let us now find angle ZPY. Angle ZPY is equal to 2 times alpha plus 30 degrees according to what we just previously mentioned. 
As a result, angle ZPY equals 2 alpha plus 60 degrees. Similarly, we can also do this to show that angle XQZ equals 2 beta plus 60 degrees and angle YRX equals 2 gamma plus 60 degrees. As a quick reminder, let us remember that triangle YPZ, triangle XQZ, and triangle YRX are isosceles triangles. From this information, we can use Pons Asinorum to state the base angles of these triangles are equal. Let us show what each of these base angles equal. Looking at triangle YPZ, we know that angle YZP equals angle ZYP. Since the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we know that they equal 180 degrees minus 2 alpha minus 60 degrees divided by 2, which then equals 60 degrees minus alpha. Similarly, we can also do this to show that angle QZX equals angle QXZ equals 60 degrees minus beta and angle RXY equals angle RYX equals 60 degrees minus gamma. Before we move on, let us state a reminder that since triangle XYZ is equilateral, where angle ZXY equals angle XYZ equals angle YZX equals 60 degrees. Now, extend the lines QZ and RY. This line will meet at point A. We are going to now show that angle RAQ equals alpha. We are going to do this by using the quadrilateral XRAQ. Now, quadrilateral XRAQ is made up of these angles. Angle QXR, angle ZQX, angle XRY, and angle QAR. All of these angles add up to 360 degrees. We are trying to show that angle QAR is equal to alpha. First, angle QXR is equal to angle QXZ plus angle ZXY plus angle RXY. Through using the information that we previously gave, we know that this is equal to 60 degrees minus beta plus 60 degrees plus 60 degrees minus gamma, which simplifies to 180 degrees minus beta minus gamma. We already showed that angle ZQX equals 2 beta plus 60 degrees and angle XRY equals 2 gamma plus 60 degrees. Now we can find angle QAR by subtracting these angles from 360 degrees. This results in 360 degrees minus angle QXR minus angle ZQX minus angle XRY, which simplifies to 60 degrees minus beta minus gamma. Since earlier we showed that 60 degrees equals alpha plus beta plus gamma, through doing some simple algebra, we then know that angle QAR equals alpha. Let us now extend lines PZ and RX to a point B and extend QX and PY to a point C. Through using a similar process as above, we get that angle PBR equals beta and angle QCP equals gamma. We are now going to finish constructing the triangle. First, let us draw a circle with the center at X and touching CP and BP. Next, draw tangents BT and CU and let these tangents meet at point V. We are now going to use the proof that we did with the tangents given earlier in this video. If you need a refresher, go back a little earlier and review that. Now, since BX goes through the center of the circle, we can prove that angle XBT equals angle PBR equals beta and angle XCU equals angle QCP equals gamma. However, we now need to prove that BC is a straight line in order for it to be a true side of a triangle. To prove this, we need to show that quadrilateral PBVC is actually a triangle. First, we know that angle PCB equals angle QCP plus angle XCU, which equals 2 gamma, and that angle PBC equals angle PBR plus angle XBT, which equals 2 beta. Finally, we know that angle BPC equals angle ZPY equals 2 alpha plus 6 degrees. When we add all these angles together, we get that 2 gamma plus 2 beta plus 2 alpha plus 6 degrees 
which equals 120 degrees, plus 60 degrees, which equals 180 degrees. Since all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we now know that PBVC is triangle PBC, where U, V, and T are coincident. We can use this same process to determine that angle PCA equals gamma and angle YAC equals alpha. Similarly, we can show that angle PBA equals beta and angle ZAB equals alpha, resulting in the triangle with angles 3 alpha, 3 gamma, and 3 beta. We now can compare this triangle to the triangle at the very beginning of the proof. Since these triangles share the sa all the same angles, they are similar. As a result, since alpha, beta, and gamma can be any number, this shows that every triangle applies to Morley's theorem. This concludes our video about Morley's theorem. We want to give a huge thanks to Dr. Akbar, Math 3321 at the University of Texas at Dallas, and Geometry for College Students by Irving Isaacs for helping us with this video. Here are a few links below that can take you to different proofs of Morley's theorem, including Morley's proof himself. We hope that you get to take a look at them. Thanks for watching.